Hello, my name is Emily Renninger, and welcome back to another installment of Hashtag Feature Friday, a segment dedicated to showcasing different student athletes, coaches, and personnel in the Rising Stars Football Academy family. Now, today we have Jack Smith. Jack played high school football at Central York, where he was a defensive leader at the linebacker position and helped bring a district championship back to York his senior year. He recorded 106 total tackles, three tackles for loss, two sacks, and three forced fumbles, which helped him earn the Pennsylvania Football Writers 6A All-State team. After graduating, he accepted an offer to play Division I football at Sacred Heart University in Fairfield, Connecticut. He's also been a great asset to the Rising Stars Football Academy family, as he often helps coach at our camps and combines. Now, we appreciate him taking the time to talk with us today. So thanks for being here, Jack. Thank you for having me. Yeah, so let's start pretty basic here, just talking sports in general. So what sports did you play growing up before that you knew football might be your number one? Well, actually, I was a big soccer player growing up until around like fifth or sixth grade. My mom never let me play football, so I had to struggle through a couple of years of soccer. Also, I was a big basketball player. Basketball was pretty much my number one sport until like my sophomore year of high school when I just started to really focus on football more. I just fell in love with the football grind and all that. So, And how do you think that those other sports like basketball and soccer, how do you think they influence the way that you play football? Do you think it has anything to do with like better hand-eye coordination or footwork? Soccer just gave me that endurance. It was all that running back and forth. Like, I can't think of a time where I've ever really been gassed on the football field, and I just always had soccer to thank for that. Basketball, all that lateral movement, all that hand-eye coordination, I definitely use that at linebacker every time I'm out on the field. And you've played a couple different positions growing up, obviously, so could you give us a little insight into those different positions and how it really helps your overall knowledge of the game and, like you said, specifically at that linebacker position? I started out as a wide receiver. As I got bigger, that just kind of stopped working out for me. Couldn't really run as fast as some of those other guys. And um, I think just one of the biggest things I learned from playing wide receiver is just how annoying it can be when a defensive guy is just right in your face all the time. And you're trying to make a move, you're trying to run a route, and you just can't shake them. And that's one of the biggest things I look at when it's, you know, third down, second down, even first down when these guys are coming to run a route. I just got to get glued to their hip and get in their face and, um, just annoy them the whole game, make them not want to run any routes across the middle or anything like that. And out of curiosity, I mean, are you happy with the defensive side of the ball? Or are you even curious as to, you know, what it, you would be like on the offensive side anymore? I love to score touchdowns. I had one touchdown my senior year. It's just like such a good thing to score touchdowns. So if I miss anything about offense, it's just the feeling of like scoring a touchdown and being in the end zone football. But I mean, I would say, and I'm sure a lot of other football people that you talk to would probably say that linebacker is the most fun position on the field. So you kind of just run around, hit people, be crazy in the middle. So I would not take back moving defense for anything. And you've been lucky enough to play with your high school teammates and, you know, a lot of your best friends for many years with 70 of you going D1 after high school. So can you tell me what it was like to compete every day with these guys who you knew were going to be able to push you to do the best? Yeah, I mean, I just feel so blessed by that. Just having all these guys been playing with probably since I was eight years old or so on the football field and just all the competition we would have in practice growing up in the weight room. It's constant competition no matter where you're at. And so constant competition every day with people who are just pushing you to get better. I don't think I'd be the person I was today on the field or off the field without these guys just pushing me to be my best. Never letting me, you know, be satisfied with how I was or who I was as a person. Just a great group of guys, and I could not be more thankful for them. Yeah, and last week I, I was speaking with Isaiah, and he gave you a little slack here because he he said a lot of the same things. Like, yeah, Jack would, you know, push me to to be better, run faster, and he liked to poke fun of you because he knew you wouldn't be able to beat him to the spot. He said, you know, a lot of your practicing, it would translate in the game then because you saw him basically do that in practice and you'd be able to make that correction in the game. So can you talk a little about working with him and playing with him specifically? Because I know you guys are pretty close. Just like I was saying, like every practice is basically, I, I'm playing against Isaiah every practice. So I'm basically playing against the best running back I'm going to play against all season. I'm getting that every single practice. So that's something that I would say nobody else really has. I mean, that goes for pretty much every position on our high school team. We had like guys like Seth Griffiths, 
Josh Gaffney, like going against Josh Gaffney on the line is just crazy compared to like other people. So and you got guys like that that just make you better every day. I mean, Taylor Wright, Bo Prabula, obviously, Kyle Fontes at tight end. There's just so many guys that you could just talk about on our team. It's just crazy the amount of skill we would have every practice and just all of us are very competitive. So as you can imagine, the practices got a little crazy and like hardcore for sure. And can you talk a little about that practice schedule? I know you guys kind of switched it up in the off season, obviously coming out of COVID and everything. So what was a, a daily practice like at the high school level? We would have a lift, I think Tuesday and Thursday, and then Monday and Wednesday we would watch film. So we would do that from like, I would say like 2.50 to around like 3.30, 3.45. And then we get out to the practice field, start with like offense, defense, ND, break into some offense, defense team, like inside run, stuff like that. And then we do some team, we do special teams. I'd say we'd probably be out of practice for about two, two and a half hours. And like I mentioned, you guys won the uh, district championship your senior year. So can you talk a little about that playoff run and what really stood out about your team that allowed you guys to be so successful? I would just say the group that we had, the brotherhood, like I said, we'd all been friends for about 10 years or so. I don't think anybody could really be closer than we were just hanging out every day in that summer. During COVID, everything was shut down. We all got together. We had one goal. We said we want to win district championship and we want to go to state championship. And I mean, at the time, if I would have told somebody else that they might have laughed at me just thinking about what we had done before that. But just having the amount of guys dedicated that we had and the leaders that we had to push everybody else. Like when we had gotten to that point, it was like obviously one of the best feelings of my entire life. But I'm not going to say I expected it, but the work that we put in, we definitely deserved it. And it was just it felt so great just having all that hard work pay off. Finally. And like I said in your little intro here, listing off a couple of your stats, you were actually selected to play in the East versus West All-Star game. So can you tell us a little bit about that, what that experience was like, you know, playing against those guys who are literally the best players in your county, in your state? That was just an awesome experience. Going out to Pittsburgh, a few of my teammates, Taylor Wright, Jamar Simpson, Seth Griffiths, just traveling out with them, staying in a hotel with them. That was a lot of fun in itself. And then Going and meeting guys from pretty much all over like Western PA, just learning about how their high school experience went, their backgrounds. That was just a really cool experience meeting all of them. When I got to the game, that was just a whole lot of fun. It was weird playing in a football game that I don't want to say didn't matter, but I don't know, like not playing for my school, I guess. But it was definitely a whole lot of fun just being out there with so many skilled guys just seeing what they could do, it was, just, it was very impressive to me to see how good these kids were. But yeah, just a great experience. Very glad that I got to do that. Very thankful that they selected me. And you're actually a freshman here at Sacred Heart University. So can you tell me a little about your recruiting process and kind of what schools you were looking at before you decided on Sacred Heart? I had a pretty crazy route to get to Sacred Heart. I know a lot of the same guys. I know Isaiah went to the same kind of things, Seth Griffiths. So started like right after my junior year, I sent like a mass email out to like 75 coaches or so, I want to say. And then I did the same thing like two weeks before my senior year. I heard back from probably three schools out of 75. So not great results, but um, getting in contact with a few early was very helpful. Sacred Heart was one of the schools that I heard back from. I coached separator here at Sacred Heart. It was really friendly. We emailed back and forth, and then we texted a little bit. And then I sent my week one highlights, I think, probably to like 85 to 90 different schools. Open here back. He was one of the people that responded, and he said he wanted to offer me to come here. And that was just like, it just didn't even feel real when I heard that. They were my first offer. The season went by. I got a few more offers. And then after the season, I uh, – a, different, a couple of different schools, St. Francis, Robert Morris, just looked around. Just something about when I got here, walked around the campus, it just felt like home compared to everywhere else. And it still feels like that today. It's a great school. I love being here. And, you know, half the battle of being a student athlete is also the student part, right? So can you tell us what you're majoring in if you have declared a major and what you'd plan to do with that major or post-college? I would say that I kind of came here as like, Football first, just trying to get to school. And then 
like this summer I started to think about like, wow, I need to declare major after college, I'm gonna have a job and everything like that. So I did come in as a business undecided route. I just always knew I was very interested in business. I've started to get into business management and hospitality management. I'm looking to get into hospitality management within the next year and eventually into resort management. I'd love to work at a resort now somewhere nice, hopefully, and then maybe one day own a resort or something, but I'm still trying to figure out exactly what I want to do. People say I have time, so hopefully I can figure it out soon. Just trying to take it one day at a time for now. So yeah, can you talk a little about what that daily schedule looks like then? Because you obviously have your classes, but along with your football stuff and your workouts and practice, kind of what, what's your daily schedule here and maybe do while you're in season and then also a little bit of off season. Is there any difference there? Oh uh, yeah, definitely. Off season, we don't have nearly as much just because NCAA doesn't allow us to do as much, but in season, it got a little bit crazy. So our busiest day was probably like a Tuesday, Thursday. I would have, I would get up at like 5.30. I would have a six o'clock lift. And then I would have a meeting at seven. So the meeting would be over around 8.30. I had nine o'clock class. And then I had 11 o'clock class. So between, I want to say like 10, 15 and 11, I would go get breakfast. And then I would go to class. And that class would end around 12.15. I have like 15 minutes to get to the facility. Practice would be at one. And then practice would be one to three. So after that, I actually had a class at 3.30, so I wasn't really available to eat or anything until like five or so. And then after that, I would have study hall and then I would eat what, what we call here kind of dinner too, it's like a later, like nine o'clock, 9.30 dinner. When I go to sleep, get ready to do the same thing again. And what about like your in-season stuff? Is it different with the amount of practicing and or, or getting ready for games or anything? Yeah, there was definitely... Certain days were definitely a lot more busy than others with film study. And then, like, honestly, game day is probably the least busy day of them all just because I just have the game. I don't have any classes or anything to worry about, which was nice. The spring so far has been a lot different. We just have a morning lift, maybe some meetings at sometimes in the morning, and then just classes the rest of the day. So definitely a lot more time in the spring to just get in some extra work, focus on my classes a little more. And have you found it difficult to manage all of these different aspects to being a student athlete? Or are you getting like any assistance from the college, from your coaches to make sure that you guys are staying on top of your grades while also being able to perform on the field as well? Yeah, we have a lot of help here. We have with our study hall, we have tutors. There's certain athletic advisors if we need, I've had something where I had to change my class. I found that my athletic advisor was a lot more helpful than my uh, regular advisor for the school. Yeah, but there's definitely a staff of, I'd say, at least 10 to 15 people. And there's always somebody if you need any help with classes or a tutor. There's always somebody there. They definitely will not let you get behind or slack off. So like I mentioned, that you've actually helped with different Rising Stars Football Academy events. So can you just tell me a little about your relationship with Ron and how you guys kind of met and linked up here? Yeah, so um, I've known Ron probably for like five years or so now. I, I met him around eighth grade. I started working out at S3. He was there. We wouldn't really talk as much back then. It was more like a hi, hello. And then once I started to get into varsity football in New York County, I'll be playing against him once a year. I would always like to talk a little smack. He would talk a little smack. And then I started training with him around my junior year. And that's when he really became like a coach and a mentor to me. He would tell me about like his time at Shippensburg with the Eagles. He would just tell me like what he would do to get better. He would show me drills that were important. I just really looked forward to just going like for a speed and agility workout with him at S3 because I never knew what I was going to learn or what kind of story he was going to tell me. More towards the end of my senior year, like the summer, was when he started having me help out with Rising Stars. And I learned like a new side of him that I never got to see, like the football coaching aspect. And I, that was really cool to see. He's a great coach. Uh, obviously, I would play against him, so I never really got to see that. Like for that, we kind of just became friends through football. And now I feel like, while I still view him as a major mentor and coach, I feel like we have more of a grown-up, like, 
friend relationship now as well. And this winter, I when I came home, I would look forward to working out with him, obviously to get like good work and everything, but also just have like conversations with him because he's great to talk to. He has a lot of good stories from the NFL, from Shippensburg. It's always good to hear what he's going to say. And like I said, you you do help coach at these events. So, And I know you were at the July 4th camp at Millersville University this past summer. So can you talk a little about your coaching experience there? And what about those camps and the combines that you really enjoy most working with those kids? That was probably the best experience of my life, working with all of these young athletes. Who actually, I really shouldn't be calling them young because I'm, I'm a year out of high school. They're pretty much my age. So I think that's what I like the most was just being able to work with guys around my age. What I tell people is I probably learned as much from these guys as they did for me at the camp, just hearing their high school experiences. And I guess just teaching them kind of taught me in a way, thinking about things I've never thought of. Yeah, just like kind of breaking down the game for them kind of helped me realize how much I know and like what to apply, what I know to what. Like I said, probably the best experience of my life just working with these guys. And I can't wait to do it again. Well, as you start up your second semester at college, can you talk a little about the different goals that you would like to accomplish personally in the classroom and then obviously on the football field? Well, my first goal getting up here was to survive winter workouts because I've heard how terrible college football workouts are in the winter, but I've survived so far. So I'm about halfway through. I'm actually having a lot of fun. But um, I think my biggest goal is just to maintain my uh, three grade point average and keep that up just in case I ever like, want to do a grad year at another school. I want to make sure I can get into a good school. Just keep working hard in the classroom, obviously, to keep that up. Football-wise, I just want to keep building my relationship with my coach, my linebacker coach, Coach Cook, here at Sacred Heart, with my teammates. I want to keep working hard to continue to work at the starting spot on the football team. I guess just have fun continue to work hard and um, see where that takes me. All right, Jack. Well, I got one more question for you. So to end on a high note here, we'd like to ask what's one piece of advice that you would like to share with any high school or maybe junior high football player? A goal that I set for myself was to just set the bar higher than you think you can go. Because, like they say, um, was it shoot for the stars and like land on the moon, something like that. That's pretty much exactly what I did. If I would have told myself in eighth grade when I thought I was a star basketball player going to go to the NBA, that I'd be playing Division One football, I'd probably just tell myself I was crazy. But as I got through, like, not a rough year, but kind of a disappointing sophomore JV season where I hadn't gotten much playing time on varsity, I could have easily just been like, okay, football's not for me. Basketball's not fun right now, so... Why don't I just give up, start looking at a new path for myself? At that moment, I just kind of set the bar, like an unrealistic height. It was like, okay, 